we will never forget April 6th, 2018. And we will never forget the members of our Broncos family who were taken from us. We were the tightest team I've ever played on. It wasn't just another teammate, it was a best friend. We were a group of brothers. It was a bond forged on buses and in locker rooms across Saskatchewan. A kinship shared by all Humboldt Broncos. But for Braden Camrud and Derek Patter, circumstance has linked them in an even deeper way. We were close before the accident, and since the accident, we've become even closer. It would have been really hard to do it on my own, and I think he probably feels the same way. Only two players from last year's team are expected to return to the Humboldt Broncos. Two young men with two difficult roads to recovery, but driven by one common motivation. Come on, Pitt. I thought that it was important to the community of Humboldt that I don't bail on them. Big, come on. I'm just gonna play for the guys that can't play hockey anymore to represent those 29 families, 29 people that were on that bus. It's hardly unique in this country. Humboldt, Saskatchewan is a hockey town. And on game nights, the town's Broncos are its heartbeat. They love the Broncos. Everybody in that town wants to be a Bronco. They're the rock stars in the little community. Everybody's making their way down to the rink on Thursday night to watch the boys play. The link between Humboldt residents and its players has spanned generations. It's helped foster a sense of closeness and belonging for those who donned the Bronco sweater. We showed up at camp and it was like, we had played together before. Every single guy, we were just, it was tight. It clicked immediately. Tighter back door, they score! Everybody was always so happy coming to the rink and just be together at the rink every day around each other. One last chance, shoots, he scores! They loved to be together. It, it really is that simple. They just, they had fun together. For Derek, that team last year was what he thought junior hockey was about. The Humboldt Broncos are heading to the SPHL semifinals to take on the Nipwood Hawks. It was a playoff game. It was, you know, game five. We got on the bus and everybody's, you know, keeping it light. We're joking around. It's always been like the safe place just to hang out all together and not have to worry about anything. Everybody had a good feeling and then it kind of, you know, just went uh, black. It was about quarter after five and I got a phone call and it was Derek on the other the phone. And he was panicked and kind of screaming into the phone, and he said the bus has been in a terrible accident, and this is horrible. And then about five minutes later, Derek called me again, and we had exactly the same conversation. He had no recollection that he had already called me. Reports that the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League's Humboldt Broncos team bus was involved Blair in a collision. collided collision. only minutes from the hockey rink where the team was scheduled to play Friday night. We have gotten word from multiple sources that there are several fatalities in the incident. We got to the site and it was it was just a it was a disaster. Curtis had said to me, um, "Let's go see." And for some reason, I didn't want to. So he ran, and um, and he came back and and he had said, "Amy, this isn't good," and I don't think anyone survived. What the people of Saskatchewan are calling their saddest day has also become Canada's. 16 lives were lost in the accident. Braden and Derek were among 13 survivors. Their injuries less critical than most. Braden suffered injuries to his shoulder, neck, and arm, while Derek broke his tibia. Both sustained head injuries. Derek. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. First time I met Derek was April 7th. 
He told me that the whole Humboldt Bronco community was very important to him. One of the first questions he asked me was, you know, where, where am I going afterwards? Because any number of his teammates were at the same hospital and he didn't want to be far from them. The day after I got my surgery done, Chris Beaudry came and sat beside my bed. We were able to have a good conversation and he looked up at me and said, no matter what, I'm coming back next year. I want to be there. We should be playing for those 29 families that are affected by what happened. I felt after everything that happened that if there was an opportunity for me to return, I, I had to be there and humble, maybe provide some light in all of the darkness that kind of happened to us. Braden spends the months following the accident at home in Saskatoon, recovering from physical and emotional scars. He's chosen to work through much of it in isolation. I didn't want it to overwhelm me at all, and I kind of just wanted to stay with my own thoughts and use the guys for my motivation and uh, carry them with me while I, while I work towards and work through it. So let's have you lay down here for me. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like this. You're supposed to have your guys there with you. And just let me know if you feel that. That second one was sharp, that's sharp right there. That sharp there? Yeah. Okay. It's just a constant reminder of everything that's happened. I am so proud of him going back there to play because they're going to rebuild that team and it's it's going to be it's going to be great. I know he's nervous and he's got a lot to think about. The weight on his shoulders, I can feel it because he feels it. Being on the ice and it felt a little empty. I miss the boys and. There's a lot of memories that I can whip up in my head. I'm always out here to try to make somebody proud. From day one, that's what we said, like, I'm going back, I'm gonna play for the Broncos, and that's the goal right now. When you have as traumatic an injury as he had, both with, you know, lower body and even his head, you're gonna have a long road to recovery for sure. He's basically starting from ground zero. For Derek, the difficulty of rehabbing his broken leg has been tackled with the support of his regular summer training group in Edmonton. He can't go far, come on. Come on, he got a broken leg. <laughs> okay. Once he decided he wanted to be ready for opening night, I knew it wasn't gonna be a question of can we push him hard enough, it's how much are we gonna have to hold him back. Who's up? Hitsy. I mean, we're going 20, 20 yards, right? 20, well, go 10. Okay. Okay, go. I kept saying to him, are you sure that this is something that you want to do? Just 10 hits. Sure that you want to go back? Then he's been yes. The kid loves to play hockey. It's just what he is, what he loves to do. September 12th, I'll be ready. Buddy, I, I can't stop smoking. You know, when the people of Humboldt see that a kid has recovered enough to come back and actually wants to be there, I think that's a big part in the healing process. I was going to visit Braden. It's been a, been a while since we've seen each other, about a month. It's going to be good to finally catch up with him. It's been the longest stint since the accident that we haven't seen each other, so it'll be good. Buddy. How's it going? What's good going on, you, bud? It's been a while, eh? Yeah, it has. How you doing? Good, how are you? Come on. We're going to be attached to the hip and be there for each other no matter what. We're going to be linked together for the rest of our lives. What have you been up to? You get up to Lake at all? No, just no. been hanging out in the city. Yeah. Like, pretty much all I did all summer was just get ready for the season. I'm happy that I'm going to be able to have somebody who understands how I'm feeling. <laughs> I give up. I quit. And there's no doubt in my mind that by the end of the season that we're probably best friends. It's all over your shorts now. And it's all over you, so joke's on you, buddy. As much as, as I know that they'll have support of the town and all the people around them, they will be the only two who get it. What do you think the first game's going to be like? Everything that happens beforehand is, is going to be, you know, a recollection and reflection period, just, you know, to think about, you know, the team and what happened. I'm trying to prepare myself to, like, be able to, like, cherish it instead of just break down. Exactly, yeah.
The immense achievement of returning to the ice in Humboldt brings difficult realities. The road to recovery has no clear finish line. I don't know if it's going to hit me until I get back to the rink and I don't see any of them, or if it's halfway through the year and I just, you know, I, I collapse. It'll take some time getting used to seeing the new faces in the room. Knowing that there's so many of them is going to be difficult. Almost don't want them to go. It's going to be tough for me to uh, to let them leave. I'm just nervous as a dad. I'm very nervous on how Braden's going to be doing. He's going to have tears rolling down his his cheeks right up until he takes that face off. I want to make everybody proud. I want to make the city of Humboldt proud. You know, I want to make the the boys who are up watching me proud. They're going to be there for me. They're going to be my angels on my back. I don't ever want to feel like I left anything on the ice. I'm playing for them now.